Uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Stephen Mufamat from South Africa. Uh, I'm going to talk today about um, nanomedicine, solution, solution to mitigate uh, HIV. Uh, like I said, my topic is on nanomedicine solution to mitigate HIV AIDS. I'm a founder and managing director at Nabai Consulting. Globally, there's nearly 38 million people that are living with HIV. And just looking at the map, you can really see that majority of these people there are within the um, Southern Africa with 19.6 million populations of people that are living with HIV. We can really see others in other uh, continents, but majority of them, they are from, uh, coming from East and Southern Africa. Uh, one of the ambition by UNIAID is to ending AIDS pandemic by 2013. This is as part of their sustainable goal development. One can question himself whether is it possible for ending HIV, anytime soon or in 2030 as the ambition by me. Um, uh, they, this, this came to me when I look at this picture of a man who had AIDS, now doesn't have. Can we have this possible or is this possible? I mean, this is the, something that came with the, the issue of a Berlin patient in 2008, named Mr. Mr. Timothy Brown or Ray Brown, who is the first person to be cured for HIV. And the second was a London patient in 2019 who was also uh, BQ for HIV. Both first patient and second patient may undergo successful stem cell transplant from a donor with HIV AIDS gene. It's a rare mutation of the DNA known as CCR5 Delta 32. Um, however, although Mr. Brown was the first person to be cured you know, for a decade ago, um, Mr. Brown died last, last year in 2020, he died by cancer. And this raised a question by uh, Dr. Judy Stone, who asked a question whether uh, the stem cell transplant a cure for HIV. Can we, can we rely on the stem cells? I mean, just looking at my slide, you can really say that the stem cells are very expensive and they come with a lot of side effects and the complications where you can really see that you suffer with pneumonia, who suffer with the organ failures and, and due, these are due to donor cell attack by recipient tissues. It shows that about 25 to 40% of patients will die with the first year of transplant. So you can imagine spending a lot of money and you still die with this um, uh, with the stem, cell, stem cells. Only Berlin, Berlin patient, London patient, apparently they were not necessarily cured for HIV. They received transplant as part of their cancer therapy, not specific for HIV. And uh, could nano, nanomedicine uh, solve these problems? Can we use nanomedicine solution? Nanomedicine and nanotechnology has been recognized as one of the most important scientific fields in 20 centuries, using a structured nano size of one to hundred nanometer with the potential to benefit mankind. And uh, we have seen a lot of, lot of achievement that have been achieved to use nanotechnology in, in many other areas, such as diagnostic, and, and uh, treatment and prevention, including vaccine. The one thing that's very nice about the nanotechnology is that the structure, I like one thing I like much personally is the structure. The structure can come in different size, one to hundred nanometer, can be actually be used different materials, could be polymers, you can use non metals, you can use the polymers, you can use lipids, proteins, and, and many other material, carbon nanotubes, you know, you can use carbon materials. You can, you can make them come with a different form of structure, sphere shape, tube, plate, star, and rod. You can survey engineer them with, uh, you know, with the ticketing ligand, you know, you can show that you can use antibody, peptide, aptamas, surface charges, you know, some functional group, or you can also coat them with the polyethylene glycol polymers that make them stable uh, or sustain in the blast streams. Another structure that I'm more interested in myself personally that I love the most is uh, it's a liposomes, nano liposomes. Liposome can also do the same. You can be able to incorporate them with a 
with the with the phospholipid that are positive charge and negative charge, you can incorporate both hydrophobic and hydrophilic drugs. You can coat on the surface with the polyethylene glycol, and you can functionalize it with a different type of ligands. And then you can also also functionalize it with the imaging agent. So the imaging agent it will give you an opportunity to to able to visualize the um, the diagnosed or imaging the the present of my material within the body. Um, according to Professor Thomas Webster, which is a nano specialist in the department of uh, uh, in department and the uh, specialist and department chair in chemical engineering at Northern Northeastern University in USA, he said virus consists of structures similar to the nanoparticles. By using nanoparticles, is that it can attach the virus, disrupt the virus structure, make it difficult for virus to survive and reproduce in the body. I mean, just looking at the structure, you can really see the HIV structure. It, it can nanomanometer can mimic the same kind of structures like HIV. I mean, just looking at them, you can see that it, have, it, have put a, it can con contain uh, the uh, genetic materials and you can be surface engineer with the, it can surface with the, with the receptor complex. So uh, can also compose of lipid envelope. And, and, and you can really see in the same thing, you can mimic the same kind of structure in terms of the size, uh, surface engineered. They can able to follow wherever where the virus goes. Um, so far, what have we achieved? We've seen that ARV or ART and it's seen so far, three in one pills have shown some significant uh, suppress the virus in, in patient blood, but does not eradicate it in the reservoir. So this is a disadvantage with the current treatment, which they can only suppress the virus in the bloodstream, but not in the reservoir. HIV like, like remaining latent or hiding in the bone marrow patient or reservoir that cannot be reactivated, that later reactivate. We can see the different type of, of uh, HIV reservoirs. They can be cellular reservoir, macrophage, dendritic cells, macrophilus, intraocular cells, and many others. You can see the anatomical, anatomic reservoir, the CNA, the lungs, the kidney, the lymph node, the bone marrow, the spleen, and many other areas that HIV would like to remain hidden. And then the other thing that's very interesting about the nanotechnology is nanocarrier can give you new hope in terms of because one of the things about nano is that nano can bypass many biological barriers, uh, which um, including the blood brain barrier because of the size. Yeah, they can, even, they can manage to bypass um, many biological barriers because of the, the size. They can go wherever the virus goes, but the virus not wide, they can also manage to reach there. I'm going to talk about five nanomedicine strategies that I could believe I believe we could mitigate the HIV AIDS or can assist in terms of eradicating HIV in a short period of time or in 2030 as ambition by unit. Uh, the first thing is that we all know that ARV can work very well, but unfortunately, they can only suppress the virus that are within the blastrums, not within the um uh, the reservoir. But this one, combination therapy, we have shown that combination therapy of this have shown some intracellular concentration in lymph node 54 higher than the free drugs, showing that with a, with a combination using nanomaterials can deliver that the, this ARV in intracellular, which means these are things which are not achievable using the only free drugs so that we can achieve. That's the first strategy that I believe we can be used. Second strategy is a latent reserving agent. Uh, one of the main obstacle of, like we said, is to cure HIV that are hidden within the, um, the reservoir or which will remain latent inside the immune, so immune system cells and later reactivate. So we believe that using latent reversing agent with nano, nano systems, we can able to activate HIV within the CD4 cells and allow the ART, the body immune system to attack it. This is some of the strategy. Like I indicated, we call this strategy shock and kill strategy, which is just part one, where you, you, you shock the, the virus, the provirus or latent virus with some uh, latent res reserving agent the inhibitor protein kinase inhibitors and many other things and you activate the virus and then when it activate the virus will be will be killed by the uh killed either using the immune system the normal immune system or can be killed using the AR ART when the, the virus or in the bloodstream can be killed within the bloodstream with ARV or free drugs or uh, you can use the other short and kill strategy, which is combination therapy, where you can deliver both a reactive and latent reserving agent, which will activate the virus, pro-virus, 
collecting virus to multiply and also suppress it to prevent it for it to replicate uh, or it to inhibit viral replications using lipid nanoparticles or polymer nanomaterials. You can using gene therapy approach, gene therapy approach here, yeah, we call it the strategy. I call the strategy block and lock strategy. And this is a strategy where you can use latent inducing agents. These are inducing, these are latent inducing agents such as a, a short pin or RNA interference that will block the virus or replicate permanently, super latent. When you're making virus or many latent in the body without multiply, we're remaining therefore permanent forever without multiply. You know, using RNA inducing super latencing or you're maintaining epigenetic silencing or, or resistant reactive stimuli. These are some of the strategies that can be used. You can use silence and block strategy. Silence and block strategy is a strategy whereby we all know that virus way to, to enter into the body and replicate it require an entrance into the immune cells receptor, which in this case, virus HIV depending on, on the receptor, CD4 receptors and CCR5 core receptors. But when you cause mutation within or silencing the CCR, CCR5, you can really see that the virus preventing prevention of, of, uh, of entry. This is another study which was done using an anti, the silencing this uh, CCR5 using a uh, RNA short pins or RNA interference. And then T, this means the, the preventing for virus entry. The last strategy that I will talk about is called hijack and block strategy. Hijack and block strategy. Strategy way using a nano sponge. This nano sponge, they're mimicking immune response cells. And then the, what they'll do, this nano sponge, they will, they will, they will sort of like um, um, absorb the virus and, and, and prevent it to, to enter into human cells. And by doing that, you're preventing viral entry. And then you prevent you will prevent the infect effectivity. So, so you prevent virus to cause infections. And last, the advantage, some of the advantage of using nanomedicines, nano, nano um, uh, including that virus nanomedicine nanoparticles can play a role or nanomedicine or particles can play a role in terms of in calculation tracks or vaccine, and it can enhance solubility for both vaccines, whether they're genetic, uh, using messenger RNA or, or DNA protein, that they can you can use both you can use the other drugs you can you can enhance solubility and solubility some of the drugs are not soluble you can enhance solubility you can enhance loading particularly for like prophylic drugs you can incorporate them highly 100 percent calculation using a phospholipids combination therapy combine many drugs some can be incorporated within the surface so because of positive charge some they can incorporate within the bio layer within particularly the hydrophobic drugs and also hydrophilic drugs that can be incorporated within the core structure of liposomes or, or nanoparticles they can play a role in terms of drug prolonged drug circulation sustained drug release can play a role also in terms of, of bypassing daily dosage you know, instead of like giving like every day dosage can pass to pass that because of the uh, structure that allowed to be functionalized you can have type of delivery which can improve bioviability and pharmacokinetic profile by accumulation of non reservoir side of hiv reduce side effect because this is specific type of specific they can reduce some uh reduce some toxicity and side effects and then the other advantage is that they're easy to synthesize, they're easy, they're not quite cell culture, many other things, easy to achieve. In terms of diagnostic, you can able to play in terms of early detections, you know, before in the period, so during the latent where virus is hiding, not multiplying. You can also play rapid diagnostic, you can make a sensor that can easily diagnose quicker, short and short period of time. You can have therapeutic, which combination of therapy and diagnostic in one system. The future, the future, although this is no longer just much of a future, this is already happening in some of the areas. Some of the study already showing the success of kind of gene therapy, where you're using nanobots, uh, small print that you can able to deliver gene editing tools for HIV to delete and edit in defective genes causing HIV, such as CCR5, Delta 32. You can able to achieve that. But the future, again, it will depending not only nanotechnology alone, but to require the convergence with other fourth industrial revolutions, We're talking about the IR, the 3D printing, machine learning, and biotechnology. And then it is in our hands to create a better world for all that live in it. This is some of the code that was left by Nelson Mandela. 
my presence of Africa. These are my references. And on behalf of the NABA consultant team, I want to say thank you so much for the platform and opportunity. Thank you very much. I really appreciate for the platforms. Thank you. Bye.